This is Damien Ferry here, live for the Unshackled, and I'm at the Stalwart Bastion 2018 with a uh, volunteer here. And um, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm volunteering to help protect the cathedral from whoever wants to put some paint on it or spray paint or, you know, face the statues or something like that. So mm. that's why we're here. And it's fun and it's a really good get uh, way to get together with like-minded people and anyone else who wants to join can come and that's a great way of meeting people as well. Yeah, that's right. And, um, I mean... How how do you think that your uh, your Christian views, for instance, uh, reflect on like why is it so important to, to come to such an event um, to be able to represent your your faith, so to speak? Yeah, well, I think with the Mardi Gras, it's not just in Australia. Obviously, it's in all sorts of cities all over, all across the world, and especially in the Western world. And I think we as a society are moving there. It's easy to be like, oh well, that's just them. They're having Mardi Gras, and we're not, and we're fine. But mm. we're accepting it. By having it happen in our cities, by having it on our TVs, in our radio, everywhere, we're accepting that standard that we walk past. The, the standard you walk past, that's the one you accept, and that's really what this is about. Mm. It's like we're actually a very small minority of people who, who are willing to. A lot of people are against this stuff, and a lot of people mm. don't like having sex. A lot of people are just disgusted with it, but they do nothing. That's right. And yeah. if you accept the standard, you're part of the problem. Mm. That's true. So I mean. Um, I guess the Mardi Gras in itself as an event, what are your thoughts on it in particular? Well, honestly, I've never been to one. I've seen the pictures on my TV. Yeah. I've never actually, and I'm so glad that I can say that I've never <laughs> really been to one and seen it go past. And I'm just so glad that I've not been corrupted mm. um, in that way against my will, really, because I think a lot of the people who go are just young. They're just having fun. They're like 18-year-olds, just mm. out to have a good time. And that's great. And I think there are so many fun fun of uh, reasons to go out and celebrate mm. but why make it people who are harming each other mm. in a sexual way and degrading their bodies and it's really homosexual sex between men is physical harm mm. maybe not every in every instance but as far as I can tell it's physical harm mm. let alone through the diseases that they right. each other and celebrating that if you have a friend who's a homosexual or a relative why would you do that Mm, that's right. I mean, and also, what, what do you think on the effect that negative effect it has on children? Well, children see this and they, they think it's funny or they don't understand, but it just becomes a normal part of their surroundings and something they grew up with. And so it just becomes normal. They're not disgusted with it necessarily. And I'm just talking about clothing and the way of dressing and the way of talking mm -hmm. and that, that kind of thing. So it's just they're, they're trying to normalise that behaviour when really the normal behaviour should... I mean, even, even before this homosexual emerged it was already bad because already you have the acceptance of heterosexual relationships that are really uh, sexually deranged let's say mm, mm. out of wedlock and that's already that's just a start this is just a continuation of that so where, where would you have um, where do you think it actually started where, where do you think the moral decay actually started from well I think uh, without it being decay I think northern European nations are quite liberal mm. and the women you know, throughout history hundreds and hundreds of years ago way more liberal than, say, Mediterranean people. Yeah. And that's really because the, the takeover of Northern Europe over the world mm. through through the British Empire, that's probably the start of putting those morals on a lot of different people. Mm. So well, that's, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right? Yeah. But then when the cultural conflict comes and... Yeah. yeah. I think, Would you put a yeah. certain, um, how can I say... Was there a certain time in history, um, for instance, that things started to get really worse when it came to um, family values going down, um, politically, um, laws changing to adapt and to try and sort of, you know, go liberal and progressive? Certainly. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not <laughs> that old, so I've lived, thank goodness, not through that time. Obviously, 60s were terrible. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Yeah. But then uh, there's probably still better than now. Mm. And I think probably... At, at, Maybe in regard to women working and having sort of financial power and and embracing sort of pants and short skirts and that kind of thing, it's probably during World War Two, I'd say. Yeah, that's, that's right. As far as I'm aware, I don't yeah. know, but that's when they started working in the factories and that kind of idea of oh wait, the ma men's jobs became so easy because it was all factories, which is yeah. only what around for not that long beforehand. Yeah. The industrial uh, revolution only came not, came around. And so suddenly these jobs were women could actually do them. They're just like screwing on things, and they make yourself. They're like, hey, I can do a man's job. Yeah, yeah. It made women use the technology.
technology that made women equal and then they had purchasing power and a lot of the men died mm. in the war and so I think that's probably where do you, do you think? Do you think though when, um, when women started to get into the workforce that that had a negative impact on family life? Well they weren't... Uh, I have nothing against those women. Mm -hmm. I, I would be the same. I yeah. would totally be in a factory right now if I was living in royalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my brothers would be dead, and my, my if I had a husband, he would probably. That's be right. Dead. Yeah. Would probably be but dead. but if you had the choice, you would rather be like a um, a stay-at-home person. Yes, and they all would have. Who, yeah. who the hell wants to work mm. in a dirty factory where you have to mm. wear these awful clothes and put your hair up and? and, and mm. And, and these days they do actually have that choice, but um, they've been, I guess you could say, um, led to believe that um, a career is better than having, um, you know, a family. Yeah, it's very, very harmful. I see it all over, all over my friends and family. Yeah. And sometimes it's all right, and sometimes it just women um, they pass their most attractive years studying mm. and working. That's right. And then they can't attract a man, and they're like really sad. And it's really, really and then, then I guess um, also because there's not that uh, partnership when it comes to the, the gender roles, there's a lot of um, bickering because each person's trying to do uh, things that they're not normally in the traditional norm yeah. designed to do. So, I mean, um, that's where a lot of arguments can come into place and um, things can really get heated because, um, you know, a man doesn't feel like he's supporting the family anymore, so he doesn't really feel like he's, you know, he feels like he's replaceable because and now women can do his job. Also, women have children later in life, so even when they do go have families, it's later, so you have that whole, that labour force full of young women who are very capable and learn new things, mm. and there's old men and they get fired. I mean, you've doubled the labour force for having women working. That's right, yeah. Men are not often war, why are we working? Mm. Well, well, it is, yeah, I mean, um, that, that's something that needs to be done because we're, we're obviously seeing a situation where um, yeah, people are marrying a lot uh, later in life and um, and by that stage then they can't obviously have as many children because of that. And, and the children um, are sick sometimes, not always. Yeah. Well, some of them are fine, but some of them are sick. Some of them do get sick, yeah. yeah the, disability, the rates of disabilities and all sorts of disorders are so much higher if you have children over the age of 35. Mm. Um, in the, at the event today, I mean, um, did you see anything um, that you would class as really... Um, I guess that that just shouldn't be in public. I mean, that was um, you know degenerate and out of the ordinary. I mean, um, and is it a double standard that these kind of things are allowed to take place like this? Whereas if someone like us was to do the same, would be thrown in jail for it. Well, I don't think any of us would be uh, taking most of our clothes <laughs> off and parading around doing it in such a disgusting manner. Yeah. Like they have been yeah. today. It's been pretty bad. Church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even if it's even if you're in a foreign country and you don't believe in that faith and it's, you see a temple or some other religion, surely you wouldn't go there. Dress totally disrespectfully, mm. and it's obviously on purpose. You know? Of course. Mm. And once again, a lot of them are just eighteen-year-olds straight out of school. I don't blame them. You know, they're just mm. like, yeah, having fun, they're drunk, and they're just idiots. But and that's fine. It's a part of growing up, perhaps. But yeah, some of the men were older. They were in their thirties, forties, fifties. It was just disgraceful. It is. It's yeah. so sad. And maybe that's part of. I mean, look, they were wearing basically nothing or close to nothing. Yeah. I don't want to see it. You guys don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Um, no. So. I mean, why are they not home with their wives and yeah. their children? And maybe that's part of the, dis the dis dispossession of men. They don't have that at home. Yeah, they, that's right. I mean, they it's, have nothing yeah. to live for. It's, it's really bad, uh, the situation at hand. And, I mean, um, what we saw today was um, was a bit shocking. Like, uh, it's been worse this time around than it was in other years that we yeah, had a lot of people, um, yeah. I've never been. Yeah, in other years it was a little bit more quiet, but um, this time it seemed like they were really, I guess, especially because of they them winning the vote. I mean, yeah. um, do you think that that takes the whole irrelevancy also out of doing a street parade when they basically have all these rights that, even though they, you know, it wasn't that they were ever um, oppressed, but I mean, they've, they've, they've got the same rights as that, That's right, but they've all got Australia. they've all got these extra rights now. So really, why would they have to continue to do these protests well, marches? Uh, have voted yes. Mm. I said, well, why do you vote yes? And they said, well, because it'll shut them up mm. and they'll finally stop and all this gay nonsense will stop. <laughs> well, you realise it's not going to happen. Obviously, we know that, but yeah. they don't know. And a lot of people... It's, like, it's actually kind of positive because, what, 60% of the vote was yes, I think, something like that. Yeah. But, but the, the whole overall turnout was only like 80%. Or anyway, less than 50% of the Australian population voted yes. Mm. It's important to realise that. And a lot of them just wanted to stop and it to shut up. And they do not support homosexuality. It's really not that widespread, I think. Well, see, the the thing is also um, to note that when it comes to um, 
um, the slippery slope argument. I mean, um, it, it's quite possible and, and, and realistic that there is worse to come. And the reason being that back in the 70s when it was first uh, uh, decriminalised, I mean, if you were to go back and tell someone in that era that um, one day that homosexuals would marry, they would laugh at you. I mean, it, it wasn't even, you know, thought of. And, I'm still um, laughing. Uh, uh, you. You, yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and, I mean, the thing is that... Um, it's back, not married. That's what asked. Obviously yeah, obviously not. not. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. Has, even if you're not religious, it's it's obviously not marriage. Not a marriage. It's marriage between a man and a woman. And that's it, right. In every culture, it's different. Yeah, exactly. But you're right. Like, yeah, but but okay. the thing is, being that um, back then they said, "Oh, we just want acceptance." Then they yeah. got into street parades, promotion. They got into gay adoption of and and having children, which yeah. is really harmful. Um, from the beginning, there were pedophiles in the movement. That's and they right. Were publicly, like they were advocating right from the beginning. So in a way, they have been honest. Mm. And I'm not saying they're all like that, but it has been like that from the beginning. So is it going to get worse? Of course, yeah. Yes, because yeah. if you stop speech against homosexuals, and a lot of homosexuals are pedophiles, then that's a problem. Because then we can't, eventually they're going to stop speech against pedophiles, and they're going to classify sort of pedophilia as one of the sexualities that you can't offend or you can't talk about, mm. whatever. Like, they're going to silence it, basically. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty known fact, I mean, and you see it all the time that um, if you were to go to a, um, a person that um, identifies as, um, I guess you could say, same-sex attracted or homosexual, um, they do tend to say that they were um, um, abused sexually as children. Yeah. So, obviously, there's a pedophile and um, an equaling to homosexual link, of course. Yeah. And um, back then, like I was saying, I mean, things have changed so much in 40 years um, that now you're even in the um, kids channel on ABC Kids they they were promoting it um, as a family day event and everything which is really sad not even surprised I yeah know. I mean you but, wouldn't yeah. be surprised in that and I mean obviously there is um, there's the aspect of seeing it within 40 years I mean like I said 40 years ago um, they just said oh yeah we just want one thing we just want to be accepted and that's it and then after that then they slowly started to add more things in then um, even when they wanted civil unions they said oh we're happy with civil unions we're not going to hassle for marriage and then they wanted marriage yeah. so well it's not the <laughs> same people obviously it's always different people in yeah. generations and they die off pretty quickly because of AIDS and other diseases mm. so we've always got new people coming up running these lobbies and all that sort of thing so you know fair enough maybe those maybe they're, I think they're genuine homosexuals who just want to be happy and live in mm. their partnership or whatever um, I'm sure the majority of them are just normal people who have you know, their families and their siblings and they just want to get on with life and they just support this because they don't look that just like... And I mean, there's a lot of also, there's people that are like Marxist, communists, whatever, and that are straight and that they actually, they, they really bait them on and push these sort of things. And then, I mean, there is homosexuals out there that don't like these kind of things and that are, are more sort of modest individuals. But um, at the same time, the movement is really... No, no, of course. Yeah. But I mean, um, in saying that, then there is um, this element of people that are, you know, even not homosexual that are straight, and they continue to um, drive these agendas to obviously decrease family values and, um, you know, push up this uh, degeneracy and, you know, um, and I mean, people can be easily controlled when, um, you know, they're put in education systems, a yeah, uni without, the goal, yeah, yeah. Like the children are just taught it's normal and they be coerced into this kind of action. I'm sure not every teacher is going to go that straight away, but once again, stand will pass, stand you accept, and people are accepting that. If you're a teacher and you've done a teaching degree and you, and you, you know, you pretty much most of them, I'm sure, agree with the system because if they, or at least they, they even if they don't like it, they just say nothing. Yeah, that's right. You can't do the job. Mm. Mm. It's an in, indoctrination factory. Mm. And I've talked to people who study teaching, and that's. Well, they always say it, and if they don't say it, they're it's because they're Marxists. That's right. And they're on the far left. Yeah. They're really lovely people. That's on the far left. Like yeah. Society. I think as a society, where we have less children, obviously we're not having as many children, and maybe if you don't have a child, you don't care about mm. other children, and we're just throwing them under the bus and going, "Well, this is more important." It's more important, basically, to us as a society overall. What a bunch of homosexuals. You are sexually deranged and are hurting each other in those relationships. Are doing then what? Then the future of our own children. And then you have all the um, programs like safe schools and all the gender fluidity. You know they're really dumbing down people so they can be easily controlled and, and be enslaved. Really, I mean, and they're it's... the ones most likely to become gay or. Yeah. Or some sort of. Well, I mean, if a four-year-old uh, boy chooses to play with a Barbie doll, they 
you know, they, they, they want to change his gender straight away without even thinking that maybe yeah. he just wants to play with a doll. It's like, there are girls who are more boyish and yeah. they are more boyish and yeah. there are, you know, boys who are a lot more girlish and do more girls. And it's stuff. not a gender issue. Most of the time, mm. it turns out fine. It's okay to grow up a boy who's a bit more interested in female things and girl things. Right. Yeah. You can still find someone you like. You don't have to. And I always think this too when I, when, you know, when I talk to friends who are like, oh, I'm not attractive, blah blah, blah or I can't get a girlfriend or a boyfriend. It's like that's that's all right. You just have to find one. You're fine. Just mm. one person, mm. and just be with that one person, and you're sweet. You don't have to like every single girl. You just have to like one. That's woman. right. And what what do you think we as citizens, since we can't really rely on politicians? I mean, what can we do to? get out there and voice our concerns and, and make a stand for the um, for all these things that are happening? Well, as, a, as just normal people, just mm. say what you think. Obviously, inform yourself, read the stats, think about it, think about the future of the, your children or your family's children or your friend's children or whoever, and just speak out. And I mean, in every role you have in society as a mother, as a father, as a sibling, as a colleague at work, as mm. a friend, as a guy who goes to the pub with his mates, speak out, name it. Because a lot of the time, your friends and colleagues and family members think the same thing you think. That's right. They're just yeah. too scared to say it. I've said a lot of things that most people would never say, mm. and I've lost very few friends. Yeah. And I've gained amazing friends who I know I can talk to and trust. Mm, that's right. And I mean, amazing. lastly at all, I mean, um, do you think that we should ban the Mardi Gras? Should the government ban it, kind of thing? Like, should the politician who comes into power ban it? Well, yeah. Should we? Should we not um, have this um, actual street parade? Um, of course, we shouldn't yeah, have it. Yeah. We shouldn't be banned by by like the authority top down, and people are like, "Hey, I want to do this," and they're like, "No." I almost think like, no. Mm. I would prefer it from it goes from the bottom up. Mm. If like the people basically don't allow it, we need to get people together, block it. Stop it. Stop your daughters from going. Yeah. Stop your sons from going. Yeah. Tell your children that it's bad. Mm. Stop on, on a grassroots level. And then mm. it'll trickle up hopefully to the politicians. I don't even yeah. believe in this top down stuff. I don't feel comfortable saying that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or at the very least, um, if they wanted to do something to have it in a private venue where children and, and all that wouldn't be able to be subjected to it. So it's uh, in an enclosed arena, and then at least that way. Uh, people can choose to go to it, but it's not the the case that uh, it's on the street as such and it's in public. Yeah, and if someone goes, like, obviously I'm not talking about an 18 year old girl who's like, yeah, you know, having fun, like, not like that. But yeah. if you know someone who goes who's in their 20s or 30s or whatever, shame them, call them out, tell them in front of everyone, in front of if you, if your cousin went, tell in front of the whole family, say, this guy went to Mardi Gras, can you believe it? Yeah. You know, what kind of disgusting things you're doing? Don't let them touch the children. That's right. Tell, yeah. shame them. If that's your colleague, you employ that goes. If you can, fire him. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure you'll find a good reason. Yeah. You know, so that kind of thing. Shame the people around you who do that. It needs to be from the population upwards. Make and sure if, that a moral standard is introduced back into society. And if there's a show where there's a homosexual portrayed in a, in a positive light, and it's really obvious, and it's for children or for young people especially, Turn it off. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. right. Don't buy it. Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, th thanks for having an interview with us. It's been great, yeah, and um, welcome. and just thanks for your support in coming out here and um, and doing your bit to you know, um, you know, be concerned and um, you know, voice your your opinion. And it's great having you here. Yeah, it's been fun, and it's be fun if more people join. That'd be really, really great. Oh well, maybe next year. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks. See ya.